Just go online and look at a dozen women's studies websites. Just read them. You can see what they say. They produce political activists, and their uh, goal is to restructure the patriarchy. Well, what's the patriarchy? Well, the patriarchy is Western civilization. And what does restructure mean? That's easy. It means tear it down and destroy it. Why? Because it's a brutish system that's predicated on nothing but oppression. It's nothing but a tyranny in the, in the eyes of the, of the radical women's studies types. Heterosexuality, that's a tyranny. Capitalism, that's a tyranny. Democracy, well, that doesn't even exist. And even if it did, it would be a tyranny. Everything's a tyranny. And so you can ask these, and, and what would they replace it with? They replace it with their own ideological utopia. Well, we've already had a hundred years of that. We saw what happened. Oh, well, that doesn't matter. That wasn't real Marxism. That's what the bloody Marxists always say. That wasn't real Marxism. It's like, oh, how many millions of people have to die before you're convinced that it's real Marxism? And I know what they mean by that, too. They mean, hey, if I was the Marxist dictator, things would have gone a lot better. It's like, uh, you should think again, sunshine. <laughs> if you were the Marxist dictator, things wouldn't have gone a lot better. So, and if you're the sort of person that thinks that if you would have been in control, things would have gone a lot better, then you're exactly the sort of person who should never be in control. I don't understand how this gets so far. I just don't understand how no one has... There's, there's no rational thinking involved in the administration and the, in the people that are implementing these ideas. I just don't understand how it gets to the point well, where... Well, think things get to terrible places one tiny step at a time. You know, if I encroach, I, if I encroach on you and I'm sophisticated about it, I'm going to encroach two millimeters. I'm going to encroach right to the point where you stop, start to protest. Then I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to wait. Then you're going to calm down. Then I'm going to encroach again right to the point where you protest, then I'm going to stop, then I'm going to wait. And I'm just going to do that forever. And before you know it, you're going to be back three miles from where you started, and you'll have done it one step at a time. And then you'll go, oh, how'd I get here? And the answer was, well, I pushed you a little farther than you should have gone, and you agreed. And so then I pushed you a little farther than you should have gone again, and you agreed. And if anybody's interested in this sort of process, and this is a horrifying book, if you want to read about how this process works, you can read a book called Ordinary Men by Robert Browning. And Ordinary Men is about, Browning was interested in how the Nazis trained their, 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 they, how they trained people to kill, basically. And so Robert Browning studied this police battalion. It's a very interesting book. So these were middle-aged German men. So they, they were... They were raised and educated really before Hitler came to power, so they weren't indoctrinated Nazis. They were policemen. And when the no Nazis went through Poland and then, and then needed to impose their brand of order on Poland, they brought policemen in. They brought this battalion of, of middle-aged policemen in. And uh, their commandant, their commander, was by all accounts a pretty decent guy. And he told them that because it was wartime, they were probably going to have to do some pretty terrible things, but that they could go home if they didn't think they were up to it. So there was no compulsion. You know, this wasn't a Milgram experiment or, or an experiment where you had to obey orders. The guy who was giving the order said, look, this is going to be awful, but you can back off. But the guys thought, well, I'm not going to leave my comrades here to do the dirty work, you know, which is kind of a virtue in a, in a perverse way. And then Browning details how they went from ordinary policemen to guys who were taking naked pregnant women out into the middle of the fields and shooting them in the back of the head. And they were physically ill during most of the transformation process. You know, they started out by rounding up uh, the Jewish men between the ages of 16 and 65. Well, you know, you can kind of understand that because you're at war. And then, well, then they put them in stadiums. And then, well, then they had to shoot some of them. And then they had to load them on cattle cars. It was like one step at a time. These guys were having a dreadful time of it. They didn't stop. They didn't stop. And so that's how things get to where they are now, is that, I mean, I know they're not at that point, and I'm not trying to make the case that they're at that point. The point Peterson is making here is that though we are not in this situation yet, we've been there in the past. The growing dominance of cultural Marxism is a gradual process that history has shown to creep up on ordinary, moral people. Through submission to the tiny infractions against individual freedoms, we pave the road to our own self-societal destruction. When, when all of the information about what was happening in, in the Soviet Union came flooding forward, and that culminated, say, in 19, about 1973, when Solzhenitsyn's book was published, the French intellectuals changed their tune. Instead of 
agitating on the part of the working class, which was which allied them with the uh, murderous Marxists, they switched and, and started to talk about power and, and to talk about I, group identity. It was like a sleight of hand. The underlying pathological philosophy remained exactly the same, but the surface nomenclature changed, and that became very attractive. And at the same time, the Soviet Union dissolved. And so one of the problems I think we have now, a perverse problem, is that these Marxist ideas are very attractive to compassionate intellectuals, and we don't have good, bad examples like the Soviet Union around that everybody can point to and go, yeah, yeah, well, that sounds good, but, you know, what about the murderous death camps and the millions of people who are suffering? We, we still have North Korea, but, you know, people treat North Korea like it's a joke instead of like it's an exemplar of a pathological system. I think it's very important to note that Peterson acknowledges the compassionate nature of the individuals who buy into postmodern rhetoric. He's not saying that the postmodernists themselves are immoral or evil or bad in any way. He's simply stating that the historical atrocities of communist Russia weren't taught to millennials in the same rigorous fashion as they were taught about fascism. Therefore, they're blissfully unaware of what real communist governance historically results in. The fact that we aren't taught about Russian communism as fervently as we are taught about fascism is deeply suspicious to me. And for this reason, I would like to appeal to everyone listening to this video not to demonize the postmodernists entirely. Their free will has been compromised. And as fellow citizens, we must be willing to fight for their freedom as much as we are willing to fight for our own. You're faced by unreasonable opposition. It's best to let your. It's best to let the unreasonable opposition speak, because they manifest themselves as unreasonable, and then everyone can see it. And so that's part of the reason that you want free speech, right? Is you want people. Oh shit. Uh oh. Oh shit. Right? There's no reason to assume that this is a bad thing. It's noisy. And it's annoying, but that's fine. You gotta let things, you gotta follow what you believe to be true, right? And don't worry about it, and then let things happen and see what happens. Because it's perfectly possible that if you're trying to do the right thing, and you're trying to speak properly, that whatever happens around you is a partial consequence of that, and that it's a good thing. Your hand. There's absolutely no reason to get upset about any of this, right? It doesn't matter.